All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're into the second game of today of the finals of Party 14. It is Enigma taking up Easy Visualize, and right now Easy Visualize has a nice lead of 2-0. to zero. Uh, They only need one more game to win this final, so it's going to be pretty exciting. Enigma needs to do something here to get back into this game. So, how are you feeling about this one? Mm, last game was pretty neck-on-neck -neck till... Well, just some, they just got... Enigma just got caught out once, and it just flipped completely in a snowball and spiral. But seeming that there are still two teams who are just really, you know, raised up to each other. Like, they really trade back and forth, so I'm just excited still. I mean, like, yeah. I haven't lost hope yet. I don't I don't believe this is uh, going to be a one-sided match. I think Enigma really wants to fight for it. Like, they've proven as if they lost the first round, but came back through to the lower bracket and up in the final yeah. position right now again. So I, they did prove that they really want this, so I, d I do believe they will make a good show out of this. I mean, like, the game from today, it kind of snowballed out of control. I Like, at, at a certain point, every single player on the team of ECV had, like, a 2k goal lead uh, on its lane uh, opponents. So, they were taking it a bit piece by piece and not letting go anywhere. I, I didn't see them make a whole lot of mistakes. There was, like, maybe one or two team fights that were won by Enigma. Um... But other than that, I mean, yesterday especially, we saw that Enigma and the ECV were so close. Uh, we had pretty long games, like 40 or 50 minute games. So the first game today is like something different uh, from what we have seen so far. Yeah, it's just the... Man, that base race uh, game was so... Oof. Ugh. All right, so we have some interesting stuff going on here. So Nidalee has actually been left open, so Stinton uh, picks that one up. And uh, they actually take a gin here. So oh, them gins taking away that gin from Sliver. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Okay. And they're taking away the um, uh, the Morgana as well, because I think Night Sniper had the Morgana last game. Yeah, so they... Night Sniper had the Morgana. Yeah. Yeah. So they picked up a couple champions, but Zeder uh, has his puppy once again. Did you go for the LeBlanc this time in, in mid lane? Because Defrit was playing Ooh. the <laughs> he was playing Azir Ooh. last game. He was doing a, a such a good job on Azir. We didn't really mention him that much, but especially the last team fight where he used his ultimate to push everybody out of out of um, uh, the Kindred ulti, uh, so they could actually kill him off. Uh, that was pretty insane. So uh, good performance by him last last game. So we're gonna see him on this LeBlanc once again and Sliver going back to his comfort pick. Uh, which is Lucian. Lucian, which is always a stable and safe pick, because uh, well, he he's he's been pretty strong with with Sivir as well, because oh yeah, gosh, definitely. That was some disgusting stuff. Well, he's just a generally strong AD carry. I mean, Lucian, just Lucian right now. If, if if you're an AD carry, you gotta play Lucian. That's just the way you gotta go. So uh, so we're gonna wait and see what the final picks are gonna be. We'll have to wait for the mid lane and top lane still. They can do a little bit of a counter pick here because they do know that Poppy and LeBlanc have already been picked up. Oh, uh, Graves. Graves could be interesting in the top lane. We haven't seen that one in a while. And they do lock it in, and it's a lock in the mid lane. Nice sniper. <laughs> nice sniper. It's a troll Yasuo once again. Uh, Yasuo support. Do it. I dare you. Yeah. I double dare you. So I think Bippo, we checked his, his match just there. I think that. Graves is like his second ma most played champion. I think Gangplank is first for sure, uh, but I think like Graves is up there as well. So yeah. it is a bit of a comfort pick for him, uh, but we have seen the Graves disappear as of late. So it would be interesting to see how he does against the Poppy. Of course, he outranges him, uh, but Poppy is a pretty good duelist. So it's going to be an interesting matchup in the top lane. So the last pick is most likely going to be a support. And it's gonna be the Soraka. Soraka. Good lord, we haven't seen that one in a while. Okay, so, something interesting to note. Yeah, Soraka had a change lately um, because they uh, people at Riot thought that she wasn't getting getting punished enough uh, for being so passive because all she did was standing behind the AD carry, yeah. hit a couple star uh, star calls to heal herself, and then just heal her ally. So what they did is they changed the star call. Uh, if it hits an enemy champion, uh, Soraka re receives a rejuvenation, uh, which basically just regenerates uh, a portion of her health every second for a maximum of, I think, five seconds. 
don't know the exact stats how much it heals. Mm -hmm. um, but um, they then nerfed her heal on the ally. So the base heal onto her allies got lowered a lot. Uh, and what they did is that um, if Soraka lances or Starcrawl uh, and has a rejuvenation and then heals an ally, she transfers uh, the rejuvenation heal to her ally. Hmm. So there is a little bit more of aggressiveness into her play. Uh, because she really has to hit the circle to get a decent heal off, but still liked it. Did that's it. actually good because that's what I've just generally found annoying. Was usually just they're sitting in the back and there's like, oh, have my heals, yeah. have my heals, and I'm just sitting there like, oh, this is so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like there's so little counterplay into it. That's yeah. that's the most annoying part. Uh, but I, I'm kind of excited because it's it's the first time since I changed that I'm gonna see a Soraka being played. Um, Especially in such a high elo match, so to say. Uh, so I'm gonna, I I kind of want to watch that one because a piece of me says like, okay, I want to see if he can make it work, and the other side of me is like, okay, I I kind of hope it fails because I I hate Soraka. I hate Soraka. <laughs> it's just so boring. I hate it from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> so just to go quickly through uh, the champion matchups here, so we have Grace versus Poppy in the top lane. Um, I'm going to guess it's going to be kind of close. Uh, early game, Graves should have the upper hand because he can trade, of course, with his auto attacks. Uh, so Puppy will get bursted maybe a bit there. Uh, but it after... depends on the positioning. As uh, Beepo just gets caught out, sure, they could trade him in. But yeah. generally, if he plays it safe, he can just poke down Poppy, just pew pewing away. Yeah, so this should be kind of equalish. We'll have to see how they play it out. Maybe the junglers will have something to say at it. Uh, uh, at that one, but we'll have a Nilly here at least here for Stinson, and uh, Norp will be playing at least. Uh, both are pretty familiar with playing these champions. I mean, they're especially at least is like one of the uh, most picked champions uh, in the mm -hmm. jungle, uh, along with Gragas and Kindred as of late. Uh, and Nidalee is like one of the the go-to comfort picks for for uh, Stinson. Mm -hmm. I do believe so. We well, have seen a little bit of nearly action already from Stinton, right? Yeah, I think so. I think he played like two times. Yeah, he was, he was uh, really nasty with them javelins. Good lord. Yeah, they went for like the full on poke comp. It it was with a Lux as well, and I think that they had they had Jin as well or a Jin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that could be the Jin and Morgana is nearly the same comp actually. The only thing that was different was a Maokai on top. They had Maokai top, yeah. Yeah. Quite sure, yeah. Maybe maybe it wasn't a Morgana, maybe it was an Alistar or something. Like something. I think they had a more frontline-ish champion. Yeah. Could be. But a similar comp to this, because this, this could be quite fun if they can just preemptively poke him down before the team fight gets yeah. just rolling. And it's actually really advantageous for Edingma here. But I kind of feel like... Um, ECV knew that it was this what's coming. They didn't ban the Nidalee, and once they got picked up, they're like, okay, they're gonna go for their annoying little poke compos composition again. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna pick Soraka to be able to deal with that poke and uh, just regenerate as much HP as possible before they go for for a fight. So I think this Soraka is gonna play a pretty important role here. Uh, we're gonna have to see how it plays out. We are into the loading screen right now, so we won't have to wait that much longer. Uh, so as you said, this is a best of five game. It is 2-0 for ECV. Uh, so all is on the line for both teams here. Because uh, this next game is going to be pretty important. There you have it. We are into the game right now. I'll scoot in over once again. So I can move out closer. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't I won't sit on your lap. Cup up right. <laughs> oh boy. Please. <laughs> Alright, so we are onto the rifts, and it looks like they're going to be splitting up once again, as we saw last game. Just getting wards into the river, make sure they don't get invaded on, and uh, generally just a bit of a safe play here in the other game. There we go. Yeah, it's just uh, surprising, because these teams were actually uh, quite... Uh, Quite aggressive in the beginning, just just rushing in, putting in a ward, trying to feel out the enemy as they hope to catch someone out. But in in the last few games we saw them playing, they just spread out visibility, done, move back to their yeah. own lanes. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's mostly due to the fact that the other teams uh, were perhaps a bit of an easier opposition. So to kind of abuse the fact that they are not as mechanically skilled uh, as they are. So they just go for the invaders like, okay, if we find one target, we're going to have a free kill. If we find a whole team, we can probably fight them and come out with maybe a kill or two more than uh, the other team has. But uh, yeah, definitely not going risk, to risk, risk that in the finals. So it does look like we have a standard lane matchup. Um, so once again, the Morgana really can't go for, uh, for the level 1 camp. And they are going to look for the invade here because they know that Soraka is going to help out with that Grom. So they're going to stop it. So that's a good point. Luckily Sliver didn't take too much damage. Basically, they're turning around the roles because the last time uh, ECV did the exact same thing to uh, Enigma. Yeah. It's, it's pretty similar, yeah. I mean, but they took away, of course, the uh, the Jin Morgana. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of... It's going to be interesting if they're going to play to the same uh, to the same level. Because we really saw that Sliver was just trying to abuse uh, uh, target heads in that game uh, all the time with the long range poke and the damage. Yeah, this is, it was, the, those pokes were just really amazing, just never relenting. Like, oh, I see someone, hit, got to do it. All right, there you see it. So, and Night Sniper hits his circle, instantly uses his heal afterwards, and Sliver gets healed up quite nicely. So takes a bit of poke, but no, nothing to worry much about. I'm actually wondering how Knight is going to hold up against Death Rip eventually, because when Death Rip starts rolling, he's like a monster truck. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to have a gang coming into the top lane. Whippo is... But Whippo is actually getting caught out, taking a lot of damage, dashes away, but I don't think it's enough to get away. Oh, from he has a massive Mor minion wave, though, so can he Ooh. maybe finish him off? No, Zedder no. gets the shields. He should be fine, and that's the first blood and going to... Uh, it does go to Zedder, so Norp didn't steal it away this time. And good gank there, so... First action and first blood here. So, uh, goes to ECP. Yep. ECP takes the first kill. So this does put Zedder back a bit. Uh, he did go for the chain fast as a first item, so he can deal with all this XP. Ooh, coming, the coming in with the poke. Sliver taking quite a lot of damage. Well, Soraka coming in with the heal and mm, nearly, <laughs> nearly hit that javelin. God, those uh, javelins always make my heart skip a beat. Like, <gasps> oh, so close, yeah. so close. So, Stinson tried to respond in the gank, but didn't make it work as well as Norb did. Ooh, another. Ooh. The binds are uh, on point. Nicely done, unfortunate. Yeah, it is one of his most played champions, I do believe. Uh, the Morgana. I think Bard is his most played champion and then Morgana. But no Bard coming in this game. It does look like Knight is having some trouble with Death Rip. It is quite hard to, to uh, trade as a Lux against uh, LeBlanc. She does have her shield, so she can negate some of the damage. Mm, uh, Enigma is just trying to kind of play it safe here, trying to get to have Rass in whenever possible, but not really trying to force any more poking upon Sliver. Junglers goes going back and forth like I kind of expected because that get, same kind of thing happened last time when you needlely just went went in with a bit of harassment and yeah. showing his face every once in a while, fighting over the skull crabs trying to get control on the river. But Norb is gonna take it away here, so they're gonna have that little bit of vision. I kind of expect. I mean, bottom lane is gonna be pretty safe for now. Um, Oh, we won't really see too much happening unless maybe Fortune lands a nice binding and they get a good pick oh, by here mid lane. Harass. Nice trade from Lux though. Oh, he's actually, doing a good job there, yeah. I actually cast that shield right on time, which you love, rendered that chain useless. Like no damage from from it at all. Yes, and Sliver in the bottom lane got caught out by a binding, but. Night Sniper is there to support him, but they are both out of mana, so they will have to back, uh, go back off to base, uh, heal back up, buy some new items, 
and uh, return to catch that wave, but uh, Fortunate is not allowing it. And oh, meanwhile in the mid lane, we see actually Lux uh, going at Ooh, it with Death Rip, but here is Stinton. And picking up the kill on Death Rip. I mean, well, in the top lane is Norb gonna at go Ooh, at it at Whippo again, both but taking quite some damage. But they both have to draw, get withdraw because they took quite a bit of damage. Graves is quite scary; he just has that bit of burst. Then, uh, well, you get caught out on a minion wave in combination with Graves' damage is just you don't want that. Yeah, and the turret, of course, coming in there, so they they won't go for the dive, which is. Mm. Uh, probably a, a bad thing to do. They would have given away both of the lives, I do suspect. So, good attempt to get another gank onto Pwipo, but not this time. And coming up, making Poppy retreat. Spears. I love these javelins. I'm hoping he's going to throw another one and just poke it at him. Yeah, so we are right now dead even in gold. It's one on one in kills. Um, and it is quite quite even so far. I mean, the bottom lane is not going to do anything too hectic. Uh, Silver and Knights, Knights Sniper do need to play safe because he can get caught out be, be, uh, by the binding of uh, Unfortunate. But other than that, it does look like, uh, especially Knight, is going to look at farming mostly. Maybe try to get that poke get, in. Getting a poke in with that AoE is works really nice. <laughs> Ooh, getting some poke in there. Tiger is a. I don't. Know, I I like his style. How he plays his AD carries. It's just when he commits, he commits truly, and just getting those stylish pokes in. I love it. Doing pretty well, but yeah, up in this in this lane matchup, he's his poke is just not really doing anything because Soraka is there to heal it up. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty safe lane here. Still, no plays being made for a Baron or a Dragon. And we actually see that Stinton is coming up into this bottom lane. There are no wards. Guys, do something. I'm a play-by-play -play caster. I can't do anything. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it, it was to be expected. Uh, like, uh, yeah, Enigma, they have to. yeah, Enigma doesn't want to risk anything. And ECV is like, okay, if we play slow, we're probably going to win uh, in the later stages of this game. So, uh, both of the teams just taking it slowly. Trying to make sure that the junglers are going to do all the work and maybe let them uh, get control into this game. Yeah, I totally don't blame them. This is just me sitting there like, ah, oh, I want some action to talk about. But it's totally understandable that they just want to take it a bit slower because, you know, mistakes could cost you the game, you know? Yeah. So, blue buff being just first and definitely picking that one up. Ooh. I think that Lux uh, not get the blue buff just yet. This is going to give Death Rip a little advantage. He's going to be able to poke a bit more. Um, and we do see that Norb is hanging around near the bottom lane. There is a pink wood there, so. Set something up. A lot of, uh, ooh, yeah, this is what I was talking about. When Bufo gets caught out of position, he can just get the trade. It will go well for uh, Zether. But, uh, yeah, just, Graves can just push Poppy back without any problems. Like, I just poke you with some auto attacks, and there you go. And it's also quite nice how Poppy can deny the quick draw. So uh, yeah. he can stop the dash away from, uh, from Graves. Uh, stop him in his tracks, and maybe... Uh, get a kill off of him later on because of course he he did receive that early gang setter uh, So he is one zero zero up and he's yeah. close to getting that sunfire cape As we do most likely gonna, gonna see some action here in a mid lane Ooh. Close javelin there 
Oh, he's javelin. Stinson safely clearing off that pink ward that was sitting in that brush. And now we see that Norb is going to get some vision control. He drops a couple of wards in the top side jungle of uh, Enigma here. Maybe wants to go and look for a gank onto Graze, but. Junglers are going to find each other, and Graves is fast to the response. Javelin just missing by a, by a thread, but again, nothing much happening. There's just, just some cheeky plays here and there, trying to get some vision control, trying to find out where they are hanging around, and yeah. No kills as of yet. We are 11 minutes into this game, no dragons either. No dragons, no towers, no kills, just farming and vision. <laughs> Can't have it all, man. Can't have it all, indeed. It's all. It's, it's quite all right. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here at the edge of my seat too, because I'm just. Oh, nice, nice bind getting hit on sliver, but they don't really commit. Sadly, <laughs> they just yeah, kind of stood there. It's like yeah, if we if we go for the full on engage, sliver can trade, and Night Sniper will be there for him to heal him back up. So they just want to play it safe, sit under the turret, uh, and just farm it out because. They know with a hard engage it's pretty difficult to to win here. We, we do see both junglers heading out to the top side once again. Oh, finally, Norb taking that spear to the face, and it's quite a chunk of damage. I was wondering because and I've seen those spears flying around for a while, but Norb was always lucky enough to just to dodge yeah. around them or just out of reach. Yeah, he didn't have vision on it this time, so it came a bit unexpected. Well, that wave clear on Graves is just oomph. Yeah, same thing on Zether. I mean, he has the Sunfire Cape completed now, so it will be a lot easier for him to push out this top wave uh, and get some uh, more control onto that Graves because he doesn't want him uh, to roam around and maybe gank in the mid lane. See that? At least Night no, Sniper is trying to get some vision control around this dragon. He might be looking uh, to go for that one as we see. Fortunate, Ooh. looking to maybe gank onto the LeBlanc, but gets spotted out by the ward in the river, so we'll wisely back off again. I also love the trades between uh, Lux and uh, at LeBlanc. I mean, I was figuring that LeBlanc should have the upper hand with those trades, but the shield placing of Lux is actually just pretty stable, actually blocking the majority of the first burst and kind of rendering that whole combo semi-useless. Yeah. Pretty darn nice. Since clearing off a pink water here, I'm not going to do much though, because yeah, as you said, it is uh, the, the healing lane of uh, ECV here. Now Norb may be looking for something here, finds that pink ward like, Finds the pink ward as well, god damn it. Like, all these guys just, just walk into a rush and they're like, mm, pink ward. <laughs> yeah. So they are going to rotate to the Rift Herald. They do believe that they have enough vision control that they can take this pretty easily. And they will give it over most likely to Norb, who can then roam around uh, even better, uh, clear his caps faster if need be. And uh, generally just be more of a nuisance uh, against the team of Enigma. So there you have it, a nice movement speed buff, makes him a bit quicker on onto those ganks. And is, is he gonna find Stinson? They're gonna wrap around. He is spotted by that pink ward. Ooh, oh. Take that spear. Oh, well, not, not that bad. No, it's not too bad. Oh, fortunately, taking quite a bit of damage. The culling going in. Actually, Tiger covering in for Morgana, for Morgana there, but. Nice. I love that kind of. Uh, even though he is the AD carry, taking in some hits to protect his uh, lane buddy, that is quite good. I hope they can sweep this uh, minion wave before they can get into some real trouble. I mean, Morgana is kind of low. So if they decided to go in for some more harass, which they, they're just kindly backing off again. Yeah, it's just so annoying playing against Soraka. It's like, yeah, okay, we kind of have to engage on the Soraka because if we engage on Lucian, Soraka's just going to heal. Mm -hmm. But then again, if we engage on Soraka, Lucian is going to have free reign to uh, attack us anyway. So 
Now we see Norb, he's kind of out of position. He's gonna get called out by Bwipo and Stinson, but he has support right next to him by Sether. the damage that comes onto Norb is quite heavy. Sether taking that few to the face. Nice block. Block. Moves away slowly. It's just, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt Poppy at all. Yeah, a bit of a risky move there by Norb, but in not too much of a trouble and uh, can get away pretty easily. So we do see that LeBlanc is actually continuously uh, getting into uh, the jungle of Enigma, clearing off the pink ward every time because he kind of wants to roam around, he wants to rotate to that bottom lane, maybe look for a dive, uh, but because of the vision that's coming out of, oh, as we actually see Norb is out of position. Ooh, Norb getting really low and gets away with his little health. Norb, you lucky bastard, you. Just, just 50 HP remaining on him. Um, another kind of risky move from him. But, you know, it worked out makes eventually. It out, makes it out. I mean, like I said, LeBlanc, as LeBlanc, you really want to roam around the map, but just the vision control is stopping him in his tracks and uh, will not allow him to do all that much on the map. Yeah, this is a pretty solid game. <laughs> um, I'm slowly running out of things to uh, talk about. I'm going to be really honest with you here. I'm taking a sneak peek at the C's go. Oh, it's actually a mouse control against ECV, and ECV is looking to be 2-0 up. So they have finished that first game as well. Uh, they are on the main stage, of course. So uh, they took a, It took them a bit longer to set everything up because, of course, every player has, his own, has their own settings. Mm -hmm. uh, so League is not playing in the main stage, so it's a bit easier for us to uh, be on track uh, with the timing here. But uh, discrimination, though, I want League up there. Why isn't League up there? Yeah, I, I oh. mean it's it's kind of difficult, of course, because we have like there's multiple finals being played on Sunday, and it's like yeah, we have we have one main stage, uh, most of them are playing at the same time. Got to make know. a decision. But I'm just kidding. I just wanted to see my face on the big <laughs> screen. You know, I got, I got, I got, I got that star ego, but it's okay. Uh, it's okay. I mean, pe people have to know about the f about that um, Kappa Ross caster. <laughs> they do, they do. <laughs> so we saw that invade there. Uh, they were trying to steal away the blue buff from Stinson, uh, but he manages to take it and get away uh, with his life pretty easily there. So as we look at the goal lead, it is still one on one in kills. And no turrets have been taken. However, it does look like uh, ECV are doing a better job at farming, at least. Uh, as I just said, that uh, the first turret has actually been taken down. Uh, so, yeah, so it's it's mostly the AD carry uh, from ECV is doing a better job at CSing. Uh, so he's helping out a lot with that goal lead. Uh, and now, of course, the first turret. Uh, it's gonna give him another thousand gold into that pocket, so it's a two thousand gold lead actually now uh, for ECV, but taking it very slowly in this matchup. I hope they can take the bottom tower as well to give that uh, give their team a little bit of oomph. Yeah, it is getting pretty low though, so yeah, slowly, slowly but surely it's getting lower. So you know, slow and steady wins the race. And Deathrip killing off another pink ward here in this bro. It's like the fourth, I think, already he has killed there. So being pretty annoying. But still, no ability for him to roam around and maybe get a kill onto the bottom lane. So he does have the Abyssal Scepter completed. I wonder if he's going to go for the Void Staff as well, as we saw uh, Kosku doing earlier. I mean, w once he had that Void Staff, he was pretty... <laughs> he was pretty much bursting everybody on the map. Um, yeah. Kind of wondering if uh, if Defrib has picked up on that one as well. Ooh, nice binding. That's a sliver. Sliver getting oh, caught flash out. Engage, actually. actually. A lot of damage. Old coming in from Morgana. Make, forces the flash onto them. Who probably without teleporting in. Repo in there as well. Culling coming down. Actually, people getting Nidalee also popping in there, taking quite a lot of damage. Of Zether ultimate coming in, hitting one shot, hitting two shots. Well, is this is this is amazing. Everybody's here at bot lane all of a sudden, taking his ultimate oh. of looks coming in. Death rip extremely low. 
had Jeez. to flash away from the javelin out of Stinson because that would have surely killed him. But <laughs> it's quick rotations ooh, ooh, ooh. out of everybody, ending up to be a five versus five. You're in the bottom lane, and in the end, it's just Whippo. He's uh, gonna pay for it with his life, and it's gonna net uh, ECV another turret and a dragon as well here. A good fight out of them, but it was kind of close. Um, Poor Whippo, though. Yeah, I think it was, I mean, it's nice sniper again, coming in with the heal, so keeping her team alive. Uh, got herself low quite a bit, but, you know, keeping her team safe, so doing her work. Yeah, it definitely was a nice engage slash disengage. Both the teleports coming in and everybody just, you know, showing their presence, like Lux all nearly shutting down, shutting down the LeBlanc and, oof. The Stavlin once again has a knob. Oh, they're so they are gonna get this mid lane turret now. Yes, red turret got poked down. I actually want to make up for that tower and dragon loss. Yeah, they definitely do want to catch up back here. Uh, so they are gonna rotate all out to the top lane, except for Lux. They're gonna send Lux on the defense duty, uh, and we'll see if uh, ECV is gonna be able to respond to this move up to the top lane. Actually, it is quite low already. Yeah, I know, there's like a lot of pressure coming in from the bottom. So they're high, just hit Wapi into the wall and he's t slowly taking more damage as he gets separated from his team and he goes down. Sinton in a really bad position also gets hit into the wall by Zether. Zether has some really, really nice knocks into those walls. Slaver always co also coming in to join the party and it's just like they're everywhere. Ultimate coming in needs to burn a flash on Knight and they back away slowly after losing one of their members sadly. Two of their members, my bad. Oh, nice flash Ooh. knock into the wall and a double kill here for Zether. Zether is on a roll with those, knocking into the walls. Good God. And that was actually a 4v5 because Jeffrip is just hanging around in the bottom lane, slowly pushing out that turret. I think he's going to pick that one up. So a very good fight here from ECV, just doing work with that Soraka, keeping her team alive. Norp, they got killed though. He, he was bursted quite quickly, but... Another good fight, and oh, they're gonna make an aggressive play onto Jin as well, so they pick up another kill in the oof, top lane. Oof, oof. And they also take this tower, so it's, yep, there it goes. That is a lot of objectives in one go. Yeah, so we go from hardly any action into uh, about six kills uh, in a few minutes and multiple turrets, so good moves here from uh, ECV, acknowledging they have a nice damage by because uh, Lucian has finished his Acid Reaver and the Static Shiv. Soraka with the Luckets, uh, making sure she keeps her team alive. So it's, it, they're pretty actively using their mid-game damage spike here and uh, making the gold lead uh, in their favor. It's about 7,000 gold uh, into their favor right now. And uh, wow, okay, so it's literally <laughs> got hit up by that Javelin, uh, but should be fine, but it does delay his base. I wonder how Enigma is planning on turning around to this. Ooh, Norb almost got hit to the face with a spear again. Yeah, Norb and Deathrip were looking for maybe something to do here in this mid lane. Um, but it would be a 2v3 scenario because the rest of the team wasn't anywhere close. So now it does kind of look like ECV is taking this game into their hands. They kind of want to get some more control uh, and a good gold lead here. So. Question uh, comes to mind is what are they gonna do next? Enigma uh, deciding to group up in this mid lane, gonna use their Ooh, poke. LeBlanc coming, showing their, her teeth, but just ports back to her original spot. So they're doing the best trying to poke, but nice snap just coming in, pop heal. That's all, that's all he has yeah, to do. That's it's like all there is. And it just stops uh, Enigma right in the track, so you can't really get in there. Uh, trade with some poke damage and then go out to the turret. So nice sniper kind of wants to clear those wards, but feels that a bit of a risk because they don't know what's in the river. So we do have dragon respawning in one minute and 45 seconds. So they are gonna most likely set up for that one. Oh, Stinton. Ooh. Yeah, that mm. rip. Has his Void Staff completed as we talked about earlier, yeah, so... And, and, and this is where it started just like last time, it just... Once he gets going, man, just... Pop in, pop out, and just burn people's HP. Like, he just cuts it, he divides it by two. 
big quick peek because Zether is actually going for the one through one against Whippo and he's winning that quite convincingly. I actually feel like Enigma misses that tankiest. Yeah, because they have a pretty squishy jungler. Like it's it's gonna be just Whippo who's gonna build semi tanky. because uh, he always is like that that oh, AD carry just secretly tank a bit Norb. Norb does get stunned into place, uh -oh. gets zapped with the all getting quite low because he got focused by the tower with Soraka heals, gets him back up. Stinton trying to force them off of the tower by just poking down at Zether. And yeah. Ooh. Oh death rip. Death Death Rip just poured it in and blew up nearly like it was nothing. People getting really low in the meanwhile, and Sliver takes up that kill. Here we go with the, with the ultimate of Jin, but couldn't pull anything off, really. And they're just slowly pressing on. The onslaught is somewhat unstoppable. I mean, they can slow down the advancement, but... Yeah, they did, so, they did a good job at least uh, getting a binds onto Norb, so they picked up a kill in return, but they gave up another turret and two kills. And yeah, Sargus had, he, he tried to get some kills on the auto. Ooh, laser, he's gonna miss that rip. Um, so yeah, Sargus had wanted to get maybe some kills because they were so clumped up together uh, that, they, that he could hit a couple of uh, shots with his ultimate, but to no prevail because he had to back off and cancel his ult as fast as possible because otherwise he would have died as well here so now it is eight to three in favor of ecv to have it well almost an eight thousand goal lead and death rip wants some Ooh, more i death guess rip. amazing burst out to fortunate he's so close holy moly just this is what i love he just pops in bursts everything gets the fuck out and just damn just yeah. amazing sound of damage in a matter of what one two seconds yeah it's just what leblanc does I'm gonna take a quick peek once again at the goalie. It's pretty even, Steven. It's like mostly the top lane right now. Zether has a 2,000 goal lead over his lane opponent, Buipo. But yeah, of course, he's 5, 0, and 3, so doing an amazing job. And he's gonna keep on split pushing and forcing Buipo to respond. But this time, uh, Buipo does not have a teleport available. Zether does. So maybe Zether can go for that inhibitor turret like we saw last game and uh, force uh, Enigma on the back foot. Mm, there we go, back to the poking, <laughs> to the poking is feeling each other out again. It's like... Yeah, ECV actively ECV. taking control of the vision yeah. here in the Baron Pit once again. And here we go again with the, with the Baron Bait, as we're used to seeing from uh, ECV. Even though I'm not sure they needed this time, because they're quite strong, they can just caught, just, just caught some. If someone's get caught out, you can just go sweep into that base again. Definitely getting caught into place. Uh -oh. Ooh, nearly got hit by the spear. Dashes away, and Enigma is trying to uh, shove up the tower, but yeah, mm. Zeder wants to set up a flank there from the river. Uh, did not do so, unfortunately for him, but. They still have quite some vision control. There is that one ward, so they will notice that ECV is heading towards that Baron. They're actually going to start it while Death Rip is in the mid lane, trying to distract him and to try to do as much damage. They're going to go for the two-man Baron, so Norp is busy tanking up while Sliver is going to deal the damage. They kind of know it. They're pinging on the Baron, and oh, they have to back off because there's a ward in there right now because of the trinket, the blue trinket, spotting them out, so... Bit of a sneaky, a sneaky Baron attempt there. But Norb and Sliver not able to oh, do it. Deathrope getting ruined into place, taking the spear, getting down pretty low, but as we know of Deathrope, he just like pops in and pops out. Doesn't matter if he's low health or not, he likes to take that risk. And well, I'm wondering how, how they can stop this advancement because they're still going back and forth. And I'm wondering when ECV is just going to go in with that Baron bait again and just pick someone up because they well, are really effective at doing that. Yeah, they have been so, and they kind of want to go for like the sneaky Baron attempts. Um, doesn't look like, like they really want to fight a full on 5v5, because of course, if they get clustered up into that Baron pit, if they get grouped up, uh, they're going to have a party on the side of Enigma with the Lux ultimate, and uh, Fortunate will soon being able to flash ultimate in there. 
Um, but yeah, right now it is just not going to happen. Uh, ECV playing it really safe because uh, they have that decent goal lead. They just want to try and, and force uh, some picks and get objectives after it. So maybe get a pick or two, uh, get another turret, and then rotate back over to the Baron. Just force uh, Enigma into a bad spot. Uh, once again, here I just get that vision control game. Pink Ward's going down. Pink Ward's yeah, getting they started taken Baron down. Again. And here we go with the Baron bait. Typical ECV tactics. Ult coming in. Red team has got the Baron, however. It's didn't take in a lot of damage. Weepo is in a bad position, gets piled upon as well. Slowly getting a burns over to Flash, tries to get away, but Elise is on his tail and he slowly gets down as Morgana tries to save him with a shield. And Lux as well actually manages to get away from Zedder, getting really, really low and sh getting shut down. What a nice save, but in the end, poor Weepo did get taken down underneath his turret, but quite an okay -ish trade, eventually. <laughs> An excellent trade. I mean, they got the Baron. Uh, it was kind of close because Lux did her best to steal it, but Norb having none of that, making sure he secures the Baron. And now he's in a bit of a pickle there. Gets poked quite low by the Lux laser and the binding of Morgana, uh, catching him out a bit. But they are going to have a good push onto this mid turret, and they're going to pick up another secondary turret here, which leaves only the inhabitor turrets remaining here. Uh, on the side of Enigma, and oh wow, actually Defrib doing a bit of risky play, trying to make some picks uh, into the base of Enigma. So they're gonna spend a good chunk of money here, gonna pick up some more items. So LeBlanc is gonna look towards that um, uh, Death Cap. She does pick up another needlessly large rod, so she's gonna do even more damage. And Lucian has that Quicksilver at least uh, uh, to cleanse any CC so he can get away from the Morgana or the Lux Binding. I must say, I was pretty amazed how long uh, Bifo actually held out the last team fight. He was <laughs> all the way in Barrier Pit, slowly walking down to the middle. He actually got to that second tower, and well, he, he died at it, but he, he stayed alive. Ooh, Death Rip coming in, just showing his fangs like, hey, I'm here, buddy. Don't you forget me. Yeah, and Lucian was sent to push out that bottom wave and maybe gonna catch out Nai here because he got slow, but Black Shield is gonna protect him. And I kinda do feel like they, they should send Zether on the split, this, split push duty instead of Death Rip, uh, because of course Zether has the TP available and Death Rip does not. But I have it. Death Rip is gonna go to the bottom wave right now, so they're gonna go for the 1 3 run split push and actually. Death Rip is gonna burst down Bipo pretty low. He has to use his ultimate to clear off that wave, but now that forces him back to base, and maybe he can. Oh, Death Rip actually taking quite some turret damage. Oh, here we have it, Zether. Oh, Zether at the bottom lane, just. He's just putting pressure on all the kind of places. Ooh, he dashes in up on Knight. Knight taking a significant amount of damage. Graves is not having none of that dashing in, nor getting stuck down into place. Well, they, they're doing their best, absolute best defending their base and putting in lots of effort into it, but I'm wondering how long they, will they be able to keep up this just <laughs> enormous onslaught of EVC. Yeah, ECV is actually gonna go for the dragon instead, so they're gonna pick up the third dragon, which is gonna net them the 5% movement speed bonus, so it's gonna make it a bit easier to catch out people in bad positions, but they do not take any inhibitors. The Baron has worn off already. So the biggest problem there in that split push with Zedder was that Zedder was actually the one uh, without the Baron buff because he got killed after that Baron fight. So he couldn't put enough pressure onto the bottom lane that they could actually uh, take an inhibitor turret off of that one. But at least all the neutral objectives are off the table now. Uh, no way for Enigma uh, to pick off anything except for an outer turret maybe uh, the bottom lane. That Poppy is looking so damn tanky. Yeah, I mean, right now it's a, an 11,000 gold lead here for ECV. Yeah. A lot of it is focused on the Poppy because he's 6 1 and 4, doing so much work for his team once again. I mean, his Poppy has been quite impressive so far, our last game as well. All, the, all, all that Poppy needs now is just the Guardian's Angel to finish up that scariness. Yeah. <laughs> Good he's lord. He's building towards us. He already has a chain vest. 
And so, I'm kind of going to expect that one to come in shortly. The only problem right now is every time that ECV wants to push a lane, they're going to get poked off by uh, Knights. Ooh, uh, Death Rip showing his teeth against Ninton, getting down quite low again. Ah, uh, he's a, just teleporting him, blah, 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 and porting back out is just... Yeesh. Yeah, he's only 2, 1, and 2, but he has just completed his Rabidon's Daft Cap, so that does buff his magic damage output quite a lot, and there we see the teleport coming in onto the minion, so the... Oh, there we go, Zedder up in the front line, taking down the towers a little bit by bit, piece by piece. Death Rip coming in, hitting a combo up on Knight. Knight taking a lot of damage, has the flash away. Fortunate, quite of unfortunate. <laughs> They're just getting melted piece by piece. You gotta flash back onto their base plates, and well, oh, this keeps. Man. Yeah, there we go. They're attacking the inhibitors, and if this keeps up, it's GG. Yeah, so Zedder knocked away uh, Jin at the start of that fight, and they picked off. Uh, I think they went for Fortune at first, and then they just went and, and continued on on the rampage. Death Rip uh, making the plays under the Nexus turrets, and they are pushing them down, killing both of them. It's the only Stinton and Target that's trying to defend it, but they see Sliver doing so much damage onto him, and Ooh, they finish yes. off Stinton as well. And that's an ace and a game here for ECV. And they're gonna take the win here at the party 14. Well played by them. Good job once again. Amazing game coming out of them. So there you have it, man. Winners of the party is gonna be ECV. They didn't drop a single game in the whole tournament. So that's quite impressive. Quite impressive indeed. Quite a feat to pull off. Not losing anything. I mean, yeah. Nicely done. So congratulations to them, and that actually does it for us here at the League of Legends stream. But not all the action is completed here yet at the party. So if you're interested in, for example, CSGO, we still have uh, Jerry uh, J Jerry Dins uh, casting that one uh, with somebody from MCON. So uh, we're going to have an interview with one of the players uh, uh, soon as well. Uh, we're going to ask somebody from ECV to come up here and uh, ask him about a couple of questions about the games here and about the event itself. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll see you guys uh, in a couple of minutes when we get one of them. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 